Hi, I'm Phyllis from southernfrugal.com. Today we're going to fix some uh, meatloaf that had previously been frozen because I make them like two at a time and then go ahead and slice them and freeze them, put a little wax paper in between them. So that's what we're having today. I'll show you what it looks like. Frozen solid as a rock. And also, I have done my biscuits the same way. I make probably 20 some biscuits at a time and freeze them and there they are. So they're somewhat thawed out. But anyway, I'm going to thaw the uh, meatloaf out in the microwave on defrost. And we're going to have cabbage. Now, hopefully I can make this cabbage and potatoes in about five minutes in the pressure cooker. You're never really sure about the time because of the variations in potatoes, really. So I've got my, uh, let me move y'all around. I've got my pressure cooker here. So we're going to need one cup of water. Let me get that. Hold on. Yeah, we'll just need one cup of water, and I'm going to put my little basket in the pressure cooker. I'll go ahead and turn my burner up on high. Put one cup of water in, and I have already shredded up my cabbage and washed it really good, and I've already peeled the potatoes. Now, in order for these to get done at the same time, I'm going to have to quarter these potatoes probably. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and dump in my shredded cabbage. And this is a half a head of cabbage. And I do try to use those outer green leaves if they're clean. You know what I mean? If they don't have bug bites on them or anything. All right, now let me find my knife. And I think maybe we can cut these in half this way. Yeah, like that. I'm just going to put those right on top. First, I want to put a little salt in there to do with the cabbage. Yeah, I'll cut them in half like this. That should work. So it's going to be about five minutes once the uh, pressure cooker comes up to its highest pressure. Yeah, I love cabbage and potatoes cooked together. And when I was a big meat eater years ago, I used to put ham in there too. But I don't really do that now. All right, so now we're going to put a little bit of butter in there. Put about three little pats of butter around in there. And I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on. Can you all see? There. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on. I've got my... Uh, seal in there and there's a certain way you have to put it on there's a little metal thing right there can y'all see that that's how you know the seal is in there right and you just line up your arrows here and clip it on now I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, uh, adjuster on there and I'm going to set it to steam so once it's coming the steam's coming up pretty fast about this high up I'll flip it and it'll close it up and this little thing will pop up that shows that it's under pressure. Okay, so it'll take that a while to come up. So now, what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put these in the microwave and we're going to get started on the gravy. Now this gravy is something I mentioned um, several videos back. I made this and I was just kind of putting stuff in. I wasn't really paying that much attention, but I'll have to tell you it was the best gravy I ever tasted. So. I did write the recipe down right then because otherwise I wouldn't remember it. And that's the gravy we're going to make today to go over the meatloaf. All right, so let me get this stuff together and we'll be back. I want to show you this little trick real quick before I put these in the uh, little toaster oven. What I do is crumple up a little sheet of, uh, this is really heavy duty rolls wrap, just crumple it up and then straighten it back out because I don't want my biscuits to get any browner on the bottom. And I just put those on there so they don't, you know, like get too brown on the bottom while they're thawing out. And I do put that on, oh, probably about 350, 400 degrees. All right, I'm going to get it together. We'll be back. Okay, we are ready to make the gravy. I'm going to take four tablespoons of butter, and I'm just making it in a little pot because we're only really making, you know, a little over two cups of gravy. 
I'm going to use two cubes of Weiler's beef bouillon, just two cubes. And what I'm going to do is uh, put that in a cup with about a half a cup of water. Now the total water that you'll need to use is just two cups. So I've already got my two cups measured out here. And what I'm going to do is put about a half a cup in there. And I'm going to go over and put this in the microwave and uh, let it, you know, get dissolved. So we'll be right back. Okay, so uh, the uh, hot water and uh, bouillon took about a minute to a minute and a half in the microwave. That's two little cubes of the Wilder's bouillon. All right, so now we're ready to put our flour into the little pot. It's four tablespoons of butter and four tablespoons of flour. Now, I'm not going to use any additional salt. And the reason I'm not is because the uh, bouillon is really salty. So you really don't want to add any extra salt. I mean, unless you like things super, super salty. All right, so I'm going to turn my bottom down a little bit to medium low. And I want this flour to just get a little brown in that butter. So I've got my... Uh, pressure cooker going, I've got my microwave going, and I've got my toaster oven going. So we should be eating for too much longer. So yeah, you want to just let this, oops, boy that burned, oh wait. You want to just let this uh, get a little bit brown, not too brown. You don't want it to burn on the bottom, so you need to stir it, you know, a little bit. Okay, we're going to let this finish browning. We'll be right back. Okay, my pressure cooker is up to full pressure now. I'm going to flip it over to the number two setting, and I'm going to start timing it for about five minutes. Also, the flour and butter mixture are pretty well browned, and so now I'm going to add this beef bouillon, and then I'm going to add the rest of the water. Now I'm going to add the rest of the water. I'm going to put it all in at one time because we might not need it. Okay, there it goes. That's my, I don't know, is that my um, microwave, I think. So the, that means the meatloaf is warm. Okay, so now we're going to bring this up to a boil. So I'll turn it back on medium. And what I'm going to add is one half cup of the same wine I use for cooking. This is Zinfandel. And it is a California wine, so I'm just going to use this same measuring cup. I'm going to put in half a cup of some kind of red wine. Right into the gravy. There we go. All right, I'm going to time my cabbage, so turn it to five minutes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add the wine right into that gravy. Stir it around a little bit. And now you want to simmer it for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. It'll come up to a boil and it'll get thicker. Now, if it gets too thick, of course, I'm going to add some more water. But if not, uh, if it's too thin, you want to just cook it a little longer and it'll get thicker. All right, so there's the gravy. We've got the cabbage and the potatoes on in the uh, pressure cooker, and the uh, uh, biscuits are in the toaster oven. I think they're about ready, so we're going to be ready to eat in just a little while. We'll be back. Okay, we're going to make a quick little dessert to go with this meal, and I think I might have already done a video on this, but we'll just add this to this little video anyway. So um, I've got a Granny Smith apple here. Now, uh, the apple that would work best would be a Golden Delicious, probably. But I don't have any of those, so I'm just going to use this Granny Smith that I bought the other day to go in those detox smoothies. So you want to peel the apple. 
and then just quarter it and get the coarse seeds out of it. So let me get my cutting board. Hold on. Right here. Okay, so we're just going to cut it down the middle. By the way, these are very firm apples, I must say. Very firm. So I'm just going to cut that center section out with the seeds. Yeah. All right, so now, let me get my other knife. I don't like those little things in that middle of that apple that Kind of like a popcorn hull, really. All right, so we're going to cut the apple and, and just cut it in small pieces. Not real small, but kind of little squares. Just little small squares. cabbage and potatoes are about ready and as soon as that little buzzer goes off I'm going to put that under some running cold water to stop the uh, pressure from staying up because once the pressure goes down it'll quit cooking hopefully. Alright so just cut this out and of course that was just one medium Granny Smith apple and as I said before I actually like any kind better than Granny Smith for this, but that's all I got, so that's what we use. Alright, and so we're going to use one banana. Squeeze that little bit out. I'm trying to do this really fast before that pressure cooker thing goes off. Alright, so I'm just going to cut my little banana pieces also in little quarters, little squares, and just put it in the same bowl. We might even use two bananas in this, So that was a fairly large apple. So again, just cut the uh, banana in quarters. Like that. So you've got little squares. There you have it. All right, so I'm going to mix those up. Put about maybe a tablespoon of sugar in there. And then just mix that all up. Okay, I'm going to have to take my uh, cabbage and potatoes off and put them under some cold water, so we'll be right back. Of course, the gravy is uh, cooking away there, making it a little bit thicker. And, of course, the cabbage and potatoes are done. So I'm going to let you watch while I take this lid off. There it is. Let's just double check those potatoes and make sure they're done. And they are. Okay, so that's all done. All right, we're going to go back to the banana and apple dessert. Okay, we're back to the banana and apple dessert. I put a little sugar in there. And now we're going to put a tablespoon or so of mayonnaise. Now you could certainly use sour cream or yogurt, but the old-fashioned way of making it was with mayonnaise. So what the mayonnaise does is it kind of coat those bananas and the apples so they don't turn dark. You know, I mean they'll eventually turn dark, but they don't turn dark right away because of the mayonnaise. And I'm thinking, you know, yogurt might do the same thing. Let's put just a little more. Now, the sugar, so that's really about two tablespoons of mayonnaise, because that apple was big. The um, sugar will make the juice run out of the uh, apple and the banana. So you don't want to leave the sugar out, because that it won't be the same that way. See, it's already starting to make those bananas run. All right, so I'm going to get all this together on the plates. The, uh, um, biscuits are ready and the meatloaf is ready 
and the gravy is ready. So I'll, I'll list the uh, recipe for this gravy right down below in the description. All right, so we'll see y'all in just a minute when I get this. I've got to fix the tea too, so we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, here's the meal all plated up. We're ready to eat and go watch a little news. It's almost three o'clock at this point and I am getting a little hungry. So there are the biscuits, the gravy over the meatloaf, cabbage and potatoes, and this is apple and banana with a little sugar and some Duke's mayonnaise. And of course, there's our iced tea. All right, I'm a little bit hungry now too. All right, we will see y'all next time.